Roy Jones has always been a forbiddingly private person, making it difficult for anyone to get really close. So no one knows Roy quite like Derek Smoke Gaynor. The friendship between Roy and the junior lightweight contender Gaynor goes far beyond stablemates who work out together or even buddies who enjoy a friendly game of hoops. Over the years, these two boxers have become more like family, soulmates. Their friendship began 16 years ago when Derek, fatherless and often in trouble, found his way into a boxing gym hoping to meet the Olympic prospect. He told him, look, you have to straighten your life up. You're either going to be in jail or you're going to be dead. So somehow God tapped him in the head of his and knocked him back on the right road. And uh, that really made me proud of him. As a fighter, Derek Gaynor has his doubters. Roy Jones will never be one of them. When Derek fights, you'll always find Roy ringside cheering him on, even if it's only minutes before his own fight. It's unreal what he's done for me, for my career. Roy is really, I mean, when it comes down to for a negotiation, if smoke is not on the card, no worry. You can't get me unless you get smoke. If he's fighting, the same night, he's there. You know, what a bond. I mean, that's a friend right there. Derek has been there for Roy as well. Witnessing firsthand Roy's greatest disappointment is disqualification loss to Montel Griffin that tormented Jones more than most ever realized. It really affected him a lot. He was so mad, and you saw it at the interview. He was so mad because of what boxing, the riders are saying about him, and, you know, all the bad rap, and he's the best fighter in the world. It really made him say, well... I would, would retire from boxing, but at the same time, it motivated him. It brought back out R.J. The R.J. came out. Juan Chester for the sacrifice. That was what John Jr. That was the best word John Jr. was going to say. After the Griffin vengeance knockout, boxing critics continued to cry out for an opponent who would push Roy to the edge a defining fight to secure his place in history. Derek routinely talks with Roy about all the what-ifs. It's not his fault that he came along at, 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 this, at this era. I mean, I would love to see him against Sugar Ray Leonard, Tommy Hearns, Marvin Hagler, and, and Benitez. Maybe Roy's most defining moment occurred eight years ago, the forced separation from his abusive father. Over the years, Derek bore witness to this tumultuous relationship, which has just recently been reconciled. They disagree. Someone saying this, someone saying that, and it caused a friction, but now the problem has been solved. The type of relationship has, Roy has with his father is a great relationship, a father and son relationship. The relationship Roy and Derek have is built on trust and respect. With all the successes Roy has enjoyed, it's his homegrown friendship with Derek Gaynor that prevents him from ever losing sight of who he is and where he came from. All the bills, the money, the, the cars, whatever, none of that stuff has changed Roy. He's still the same person that I met back in 1984. You know, and, and that's rare. As rare as a true lifetime friendship, the kind Derek Gaynor enjoys with the world's best fighter. And I say, what, what makes you, you know, do so much for me? Why? And he always says, he says, smoke on. For one, I'm not selfish. And for two, I love you. And I want to see you succeed. And I know you can. Tonight's guard, an exception to the rule, smoke Gaynor not appearing here because he has signed to fight Diego Corrales for the World 130-pound championship that Corrales holds a little bit later on down the road. You know, I spoke to uh, referee Arthur McCanty, Jr. Uh, we'll get to that in a moment. Here's the uh, tail of the tape.